We have Ben from Cranbourne Audio. Now, Cranbourne have really made a name for themselves recently with the R8 and the ADAT lunch boxes that you've got. That's right. How are those going for you? Going really well, going really well. I mean, it's a bit of a game changer, really. Our uh, 500 series racks um, are fully featured um, with, uh, uh, with a summing mixer in, uh, inbuilt. Um, we have two versions of it, the, um, the 500 R8, which is our audio interface, with 30 channels of uh, USB audio going in and out of the units. We also have another version of it called the 500 um, ADAT. The 500 ADAT, as, um, as the name implies, brings its audio in uh, via the ADAT ports. Um, we've got world-class conversion in there, super, super low jitter. Um, but the most important thing um, for us, we think, is the, is the ability to create um, your, uh, your own summing mix. So each 500 series module or slot um, has a, its own level and pan control and it has its, uh, a choice of three input types. So in this case, we're looking at the 500 ADAT. Um, so we've got it set to ADAT, which is our playback for this demo demonstration. But you can also, with a flip of a switch, come into an XLR input. Um, so uh, this looks a little bit like a channel on any other mixing console. So you have an input, an insert point, and a direct output, all in the analog domain. But crucially, um, the direct output is also going out of the ADAT ports as well and those are those are full time so if you've already got an audio interface and you want to use the ADAP ports that are on there um, this is the guide to use because it enables you to yeah. come into this 500 series land yeah I've, I've, I mean I've got some 500 set up via DB25s oh, yeah. through a flock I've just spoken to those guys okay but I have uh, you know the X6 so I've got more ADAP potential which so this is on my radar for further expansion now your mojo preamps are really popular really yes. successful yeah. The mojo setting on those, everyone raves about that, which is good. Now, before we talk about the EQs, I have to ask, do you have any compressors planned? I couldn't possibly comment. Couldn't possibly. I'll ask you again in January. Then. Yeah, the I mean, the thing is, look, we're in, the, we're in the business of making 500 series modules. It'd be lovely to have a full, full featured channel strip available in that format. Um, at the moment, as you say, we've got our Carnaby 500, uh, which has been doing really, really well, selling thousands of those things. Brilliant. Um, people really love the, um, the ability to have a like, super clean uh, mic pre, but also dial in a little bit of mojo um, as and when they want. Um, but yeah, and so this is the logical next step, really, having an EQ. So the Carnaby Harmonic EQ, if I'm right, is basically attenuating harmonics at different frequencies. Well, actually, um, it's, it's, it's kind of doing that. Okay. Um, and in, in that respect, it's, uh, um, you, could, you could think of it as a... Some people think of it as a multi-band exciter or a saturator and things like that, but it's doing more than that, really. What we're actually doing is, um, is creating harmonic content, and that is creating in itself the EQ effect, if you like. Okay. The interesting thing about that, then, is, um, is that even if, you're, even if you're cutting a frequency that you've got selected on, uh, on the familiar kind of EQ controls, it's still generating harmonic content of that fundamental frequency which creates in itself uh, a more rich experience when you're listening. Right. Um, and one of the things uh, that's interesting about this as well is that it's dynamic behavior. So the more you hit it, the more harmonic content is going to be created and the more the EQ effect happens. Um, okay, and one so of the ways that we can creative potential. Yeah, one yeah. of the ways we can control that is because unlike another EQ, for example, we have an input and an output trim. So we can hit it hard and then we can back off at the other end just so he can keep, keep, the right, game, okay. keep the game in check. And I believe these are wirelessly stereo linkable. That's right, yes. To do stereo pairs, and then you can flick one of these switches and just change one unit rather than having to carefully exactly match yeah, both. Absolutely. One is driving the other. Correct. This is our OptoSync system. And the OptoSync uh, system works by listening to the transmission from one module to the next. Uh, in this example, we've got this set up as a stereo pair. So um, the left-hand module is controlling the right-hand module, uh, and that's accurate within half a dB. Interestingly, though, the way that the Opto system, OptoSync system works means that we can, link, we can link all the channels together. So the potential there is for all of these channels to be controlled by one, which has implications wow. beyond yeah. just being in 500 series land that we're trying to explore. Wow. We're, we're no doubt going to exploit. Okay. And I believe, is this a limited edition version? Yeah. 
So is, is, it, was, is there a difference other than the face? So plate? electronically, the limited edition, the legacy edition is, um, is exactly the same. These guys were hand built in the UK by us, the team at, Con um, at Cranbourne Audio, and they're available as a stereo pair in the shops right now. Um, these guys are the what we call the retail units, and they'll they'll be the ones that are, um, are going to be selling in the shops um, uh, in about uh, oh, a couple of months, I guess. Okay. By the time they hit the streets. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic, Ben. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Ben, nice to meet you. Take it easy.